So, I'm speaking to uh, Professor Dr. Kaiser Bautanen, leader of food research at VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. We're here in Brussels for the Food 2030 on research and innovation for tomorrow's nutrition and food systems. Professor Bautanen, you're invited as project leader to present at the Food Village the so-called prominent project. I'm interested in learning what kind of work you have done on protein processing. Uh, when we want to valorize the proteins in a new way, uh, the first thing is to concentrate them because they often have too low concentrations in the original raw materials. We do that by dry processing and classification or then by wet processing. And when we have uh, the concentrates, uh, they typically need to be functionalized, improved, the functionality must be improved, uh, and that's what we are doing by mostly by enzymes and fermentation, by bioprocessing, also by other means though. And um, then the third thing is to develop new product concepts and, and, and make the functionality of these ingredients good in, in the end products. And there we have an array of products where we have been working with already. So how many international protein projects are you working on right now? We are working now on, in three international projects. Prominent was already mentioned. And then we want to valorize uh, size streams for wheat and rice processing and develop new food uses for those. Uh, then we have um, a European project for valorization of oat protein uh, with a similar approach. Uh, there we especially want to see the consumer value and, uh, and develop new product concepts. And we are also starting a Nordic project where we valorize the Nordic raw materials. There we consider it on rapeseed and barley and their new uses. So what other raw materials than oat and wheat have you worked on? What are you working on at the moment? Yeah, we have been we have a strong history in cereal research, so cereal proteins is one of our focus areas. Uh, we also um, have been working along with rapeseed protein, and uh, altogether, side stream valorization is something we are looking at. That brings us also to spent grains processing. There are many side streams which contain good amounts of protein, which are now used for feed. We would like to bring it to food uses. Uh, we also um, have been fractionating other materials like insects. We have an eye in, in the single cell protein production. We are looking at it quite widely, uh, mm -hmm. but we um, plant is something which we still are concentrating on currently. As you've worked on so many different proteins, it's a fair question to ask you, where do you see the future of protein technology research going? Yeah, I perhaps answer mainly from the part of plant uh, proteins now, and there I clearly see that we are we need the multifunctional ingredients. My own background in nutrition is in dietary fiber, and and I think that mostly we have fiber and protein in the same fractions, and we need to understand the interactions and make the the good out of what there was originally in the plant raw material. To but then we need to handle the interactions and understand the functionality both in nutrition and for the consumer perception. So that's a key. What other uh, things are, are necessary, do you think, in yeah, working in the then, value then chain? Then um, the other thing which we have learned, especially in our work on side streams, is that we should really rethink the food chains, because currently we are often uh, denaturating perhaps protein or, or causing other, other harm. If we would start from the beginning and think how we can best valorize the raw material to different end uses, um, so if, if we could get better value out from the raw material, so really going downstream or upstream in the process, um, uh, thinking of the origins, that's one thing. And the third issue, of course, is then to bring um, different uh, value chain actors together and create new ecosystems for to do these things, uh, because often we need markets for somebody to get to start to produce ingredients, and, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, um, uh, end users would like to have an array of ingredients. So so how we can all work together, that's very critical in this matter. Mm. So this leads me to the final question, which I'd like to ask you. If you can give me one example of a successful business case on protein valorization in Finland that you've worked on, where you've been close to, and where you've seen the success. Uh, yeah, that's always a long way. Um, I would perhaps speak over here about oats, where we have 20 years of tradition in, in working for oat fractionation for new ingredients. And what we actually have already commercialized is the 
production of soluble fiber beaded lucan, which Flaxer companies is now producing. And from the same fractionation process, we uh, get a good stream of, of oat protein, which we now are working on and which we would like to bring to new foods. And oat protein is really good uh, for in nutritional uh, in its nutritional value and uh, interesting um, for different uses. And we already have uh, a few applications on that, like pasta, bread. Uh, we know oat milk could be one ex example. So there are many things which you can do with uh, oat protein, and that's what we are currently working at. But the protein is there already, so we just need to continue. And uh, I would also say that this is an example where uh, where we see that, that you really have to be determined and, and have your focus uh, in, in long-running aims, because uh, it's a many-year process to bring something at this uh, market maturity and also then uh, going further uh, to new valorization or, or adding new values to that. So this type of research is available to um, to other maybe companies or organizations yeah. or other countries to capitalize on when they want to know more about uh, valorizing oat oat protein and all together we we have a platform of, of operations as i said in the beginning uh, both the concentration part and the, the functionalization part through bioprocessing and by other means and then the the understanding of the interactions and applications what you need to do to really have a good product based on this um, protein so this is what we are working on in our wide collaboration network with with many mm -hmm. Uh, operators both uh, in the industry but also in as, as shown uh, in science mm -hmm. and technology thank you very much